Hello my darlings, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a fashion video. Oh my goodness, it has been a little while but I feel like we are finally ready to bring the fashion videos back. If you're watching today, the day that the video goes live, then happy Easter. I hope you're having a fabulous Easter weekend. Today we are going to be talking about 10 wearable spring trends ready for life after lockdown. I feel like these trend videos and especially spring trend videos have become an iconic part of my channel. I have been doing the Fashion Mumbler spring edit for gosh maybe five years now. It has been a long-standing series here on my channel. I don't feel like we quite need a full edit yet. I feel like we need to just dip our toe back into the water when it comes to fashion content because I don't know about you but this year has just blown everything into the atmosphere and I just need to be drip fed a little bit of fashion inspo as life slowly but surely starts to go back to normal. So I thought it'd be really useful to just do an overview of wearable trends, a few little design details to just have at the back of your mind when you are putting together outfits for your re-emergence <laughs> into the world. Before we get started, if you are new to my channel then darlings I would really really love it if you hit the subscribe button button down below and also if there is anything that you love the look of in this video it'll all be linked in the description box so just click show more if you'd like to see links to anything featured in today's video. So for these trend videos I usually refer to the runways quite a lot when it comes to what designers have been sharing but this time I wanted to make it a whole lot more wearable. I feel like the runways haven't been quite as important in a way when it comes to the kind of things that we've been wearing and I'm pleased to say that I think a lot of these trends are a whole lot more wearable than we've ever seen before and after pretty much a year <laughs> wearing loungewear I am very 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 happy to hear it. So the first trend that we are going to be seeing for life after lockdown is house slippers. We have become all so accustomed to wearing actual slippers 24-7 that I think we're not going to be quite ready to going back to high heels and the kind of shoes we'd probably wear on a lot more of a regular basis before the pandemic. So those comfortable slip-on house slipper style shoes are going to be the footwear trend that we're going to be seeing so much of this spring. For each of these trends I'm going to try and show you a couple of examples if I happen to have a few things that represent the trends in my wardrobe. So I have these house shoes from Vince and you'll have to you'll have to accept my apologies they are a little bit covered in soil. I'm not gonna lie I have been gardening in these lately but this is the kind of shoe that I'm happy to wear in and around the house but also out into the whole out into the wide world as well. Really comfortable, really easy to slip on. But if you're looking for something a little bit more stylish to elevate your wardrobe, then oh my goodness, you cannot go wrong with mules. There are mules for so many different budgets from the beautiful Gucci mules. I mentioned in a recent video that I didn't get to wear my floral Gucci mules at all last year. So I'm very, very excited to wear them this year. But also the premium high street has some beautiful options as well. These ones are just so, so stunning. I think they look a lot more expensive than they actually are. They are beautiful quality and this blue and white toile de jouy is another kind of sub-trend that we're definitely going to be seeing a lot of. And if, like me, you are a huge fan of white dresses, then this is a really lovely way of just adding a little bit of colour, a little bit of pattern to an outfit without making too much of a statement. This is a trend that we did see the designers doing. It was Proenza Schooler that showed us loads of different mules. J.W. Anderson had some slip-ons with really large than life buckles so yes the designers are showing us that this is a trend to follow but it most certainly is one of my favorite in fact my number one favorite wearable footwear trend for spring and summer 2021. Anyone that's a regular here at my channel will know that the romantic and feminine trends are always the ones that steal my heart so trend number two that is very wearable for life after lockdown is billowy sleeves. Now this has become a little bit of a mainstay trend we've seen it for many many years but this year as predicted it has been dialed down just a little bit and made in some ways a little bit more masculine but I'm gonna keep it quite feminine because that is just my personal style that's the way that I like to interpret these trends have a look at them and think how can I make this work for my wardrobe I don't ever feel the need to follow a trend to a T if I have something that's remotely 
similar along those kind of lines in my wardrobe but then that's what I will start to match my outfits with as opposed to going out and buying something completely new just because it ticks all the trend boxes. So what I would say and something that I always say is just take these trends with a little pinch of salt and don't be afraid to make them your own. So when it comes to the designers it was Cecil Bansom that made the billowy sleeves a little bit more masculine with dark colours. We saw some black billowy sleeve dresses on the runway. We also saw these voluminous proportions from designers such as Lueve. But I absolutely loved how Isabel Moron took on this trend with big billowy sleeves on her coats. Now we are already seeing this trend filter into the high street, even what I'm wearing now, although this is, this is from Hermano Scervino, I think I pronounced that right, so a little bit more premium. But I have a beautiful top, I'll pop a cutaway here on the screen from And Other Stories, which has got beautiful billowy sleeves. Some of my favourite dresses of, of the moment from And Other Stories are making it even more subtle, even more wearable, with just a slight, just a slight voluminous aspect to the sleeves. Of course, one of my number one spring-summer brands, Zimmerman. They are the masters of a beautiful, romantic, slightly voluminous sleeve created with some beautiful pleating. If I want to go a little bit bigger with a certain trend, but I'm not sure potentially about its longevity, then I will always go to high street pieces first. That way I'm not spending a huge amount of money on something that I'm not sure if I'm going to absolutely love in seasons to come, but it's really fun to play around with these trends with those high street pieces. I love it when classic trends get a feminine twist, which is why I love the 2021 shirting trend. Shirts, okay, they are an absolute wardrobe classic, there is nothing trendy about a shirt, but there are always little features maybe it's the colour, maybe it's the silhouette, maybe it's just the way that you wear it, of shirting that change year on year. So this year they're a little bit more feminine, a little bit more romantic. We saw designers such as Jacquemus, I think they did the kind of tie underneath the bust. We saw Nanushka offering shirting in a really lovely muted palette which made it so so wearable and so many of my favourite brands are releasing their spring summer batch of shirts. For example this beautiful, such a flattering lemony shade shirt from Reese. I also picked up this gorgeous broad shirt. Brodery, oh my goodness, that doesn't even classify as a trend, it is a an essential staple throughout spring and summer, this brodery blouse with the most beautiful pearl buttons from River Island, and yes, everything will be linked in the description box if you want to shop any of these pieces. Shirts are also the most fantastic layering piece. This one from H&M is fabulous for popping on over perhaps a strappy dress on those lovely warm summer days. If it gets a little bit chillier in the evenings, shirts are fantastic layering pieces, so a very versatile addition to a spring wardrobe. Another trend that I love love for spring summer 21 and this one definitely feels like we are breaking free from our lockdown mold is joyful dresses. There has never been a better excuse to wear your most fabulous dresses to whatever occasion life throws at you this spring and summer <laughs> than being released from the shackles of a pandemic. So I for one am going to be wearing joyful dresses whenever I possibly can. I feel like these completely span budgets whether it's affordable dresses from H&M and aren't they doing them so beautifully at the moment. I featured a little edit of some of my favourites in my latest newsletter, all the way up to the most voluminous and fabulous designs from Needle and Thread, and the kind of dresses you just want to wear to every single occasion from Zimmerman. I have got so many favourites. There are also some slightly more wearable but equally joyful dresses from retailers such as And Other Stories, and I feel like every designer did this from, from Proenza Schooler to Valentino. J.W. Anderson, Molly Goddard, they were all making the most beautiful, joyful dresses in fabulous colours, whether it was pinks, oranges, yellows, we are definitely seeing that optimistic vibe coming through from the runway all the way down into the high street. We all need those transitional pieces in our wardrobe as we turn from winter to spring into summer. So this trend comes about year after year and it is of course spring knits. Now you can really find one to suit your personal style, whether it's a really soft and easy to wear neutral shade and neutrals of course can slightly vary person to person. For me a neutral is very much blush pinks, creams, whites, those kind of tones as you might be able to guess from the colours of the items you can see in the background. So this one here from Reese is most definitely a favourite with those more muted and easy to wear styles but then who can resist florals in spring, groundbreaking, those slightly more ditzy styles such as this beautiful cardigan new to my collection from Love Shack Fancy, oh my goodness. Again great 
it as a layering piece when it starts to get a little bit chilly during the evenings because let's face it we've been stuck inside for so long I don't know about you but I feel like I've forgotten how to navigate temperature changes so a lovely spring knit is a great way to solve this problem now I definitely think we have Jennifer Lopez to blame for this next trend and it is the new look bralette oh my goodness tops are getting more and more cropped maybe it's JLo maybe it's TikTok who knows <laughs> But the tops are definitely getting shorter. We are definitely seeing a lot more midriff at the moment. Oh my goodness, without even meaning to, I'm showing a little bit of midriff today. But even shorter top, really that kind of bralette style, even with a little bit of boning to actually give the look of a bralette is really something that we're seeing emerging from designers down to the high street once again. And other stories have got some really, oh, it could actually be a Bridgerton inspired trend as well. And other stories we're seeing that really beautiful structure. I've seen some bralettes from some of my favorite high street stores again, such as River Island. And then you could say this beautiful favorite new top of mine from Zimmerman is also that kind of bralette cropped trend so we're going to be seeing a lot of those where the worn with some slightly more casual jeans again like i'm wearing right now or with beautiful beautiful shorts floaty skirts i actually think they're a lot more versatile than we initially give them credit for now a trend seen from the likes of victoria beckham versace i'm not sure I definitely wasn't sure how I felt about it when I first saw it, but now that the high street is doing it, I've been able to play, play around a little bit with it, and the trend is flossing. <laughs> no, thankfully not that crazy dance move that was sweeping social media last year, but literally like dental floss wrapped around your middle area. That's the best way I would describe it. I have this beautiful yellow blouse from And Other Stories and I have to admit it is actually pretty flattering, especially if you want to emerge into that kind of bralette trend that I previously mentioned. It just feels a little bit more wearable, a little bit more covering perhaps, to have this floss detail and I actually think it is so, so flattering. If there is a trend that you're not particularly sure on how to style, look for other design elements that you are comfortable with. So the And Other Stories top, for example, would be a great way of implementing the flossing trend if you are already really comfortable with the shirting trend because it really combines the two. When it comes to bottoms, wide leg trousers are definitely the number one bottoms trend and the most wearable bottoms trend for life after lockdown, whether it is a more denim style, such as this pair of accrue wide leg denim trousers that I'm wearing right now. I don't know about you, but I just can't bear anything tight on my legs unless it is a pair of comfortable leggings, but we're trying our hardest to move away from leggings as we've been wearing them nonstop for the last year, but also we're seeing some lovely elasticated waistbands. Oh my goodness, aren't they just the best? and lovely flowy wide leg trousers that can definitely be dressed up a little more smartly. I'll pop a clip on the screen here of this lovely pair from Brees. And again, this can be styled with perhaps a shirt to tick two trend boxes in one. Now this is kind of similar to the bralette trend, but in particular, corsetry. We are seeing a lot of corsetry. I believe it was Givenchy that really championed this throughout the runways. And again, I'm definitely getting those Bridgerton kind of historic vibes. We are seeing it all the way from beautiful dresses, again, like needle and thread, all the way down to the high street. We also have been seeing a lot more sheer fabrics and when you're wearing more of a sheer blouse, it's nice to make a statement with the kind of undergarments and corsetry is definitely a fabulous way of doing this. And then the final trend and one of my favorites, it's one which has been emerging for quite a while now, but spring and summer 2021 is where we see it absolutely pinnacle. And it is of course cottage core. I feel like this trend could not be more perfectly timed for me as we are approaching our one year having moved from London to the Cotswolds and so many of the pieces that I'm loving wearing in my wardrobe right now definitely tick that cottage core trend, whether it is this gorgeous floral vest gilet that I've been wearing for my gardening, the Love Shack fancy cardigan that I shared with you earlier, general floral prints, puff sleeves, romantic dresses, they all tick that cottage core trend and I absolutely love it and I think we're going to be seeing so much more of that especially as we holiday in the UK this year. It's all about those cottagey vibes, Cotswold vibes, as opposed to those kind of Ibiza vibes this summer. So that is a trend that I am very, very happy to give my stamp of approval to. So we're ending on possibly the best one. Darlings, I hope you found that interesting. I hope that this has given you a little bit of an idea of the kind of trends that your outfits could give a nod to as we emerge from life after lockdown. I feel like I've spoken at a million miles an hour because, oh my goodness, I miss talking about fashion, so let me know if you would like to see a little bit more of a spring edit on my channel this year, or if this is enough of a 
dip <laughs> into the fashion waters. So darlings, that's all from me for today. Wishing you a wonderful rest of your Easter weekend. And I will see you on Tuesday for a very long vlog. Get yourself ready, have your cup of tea made, make yourself a bath, tuck yourself up into bed because Tuesday's vlog is a long one. We have a lot to catch up on. But darlings, that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.